Hi, my name's Keith Cooper, Northlight Images, and this video is about pricing prints to sell. Now, this is a, a tricky area, and there's all kinds of conflicting advice you'll find on this. In fact, somebody recently asked me about this and suggested that they'd seen elsewhere on YouTube, I believe it was, someone suggesting that uh, basically work out your costs, multiply the cost by three times or thereabouts. Other numbers may fit if you feel like it, um, and that would give you a cost um, a cost and multiplying that would give you something to sell your prints for. Well, that's fine if you are perhaps running a business where you are producing a steady stream of prints, you have a steady market and you want to price it for your market. Um, in fact, knowing your costs sets a baseline, it doesn't necessarily tell you how much you ought to be trying to sell the print for. And there's the difficulty for it. Almost any simple answer you get is too simple and therefore most likely wrong. Now, it may by chance fit your model, your business model of it. And there comes the tricky first bit. Is it, why are you selling the prints? Is it a business? Are you aiming to do this uh, to make money? It's a profitable business in selling your prints. Um, I take all sorts of prints. I'm an architectural commercial photographer. I do occasionally sell prints, but print has never ever been a significant major part of the North Light Images business model of, as a photography business. I have large prints I produced. Here's some pictures of me standing around various holding prints in front of a print. And there's, um, these prints have been produced as part of my ongoing business. Yes, I do sell prints sometimes, and I often sell them for quite a bit. And the prices I ask um, for bespoke ones like this, it's often what I think I'll get away with. Now, that may sound tremendously casual and sort of, what do you mean what you can get away with? Well, yeah, yeah. As I said, why are you selling the business, the prints? Is it a business or is it a hobby? If it's a hobby, are you selling them because, well, you want to sell and it would be nice to make some money to help defray some costs? In that case, you might look at how much does actually physically making a print? So there's a big print up on the wall here. Here's a small borderless version of it. I don't know what this was printed on. This is part of when I was testing um, a smaller printer. So it's a borderless print of a large one up there. Um, I can tell by looking at the reflection of the light on this, that this is not a particularly high end printer, but you know, the picture looks okay. It probably looks okay here on YouTube. You know, certainly, yeah, video is very difficult for showing things like print quality, but how much would I sell this? Well, I probably wouldn't because it's not of a high enough quality. I want a certain level of quality. So I could work out the costs of, print, of printing this on a better printer, for example. I know how much paper costs. I can have a general idea of ink costs um, and I come up with a price for that of materials. Now that's a baseline, absolutely. You know, I don't really want to sell it for less than that. But, you know, why am I selling it again? Is it, if I sell this for two pounds, let's say this was a you know, much better quality paper. Now, let's say um, I'd printed it as more usually, I'd print something like that. And there's the, is one, of, one of Keith's holiday photos um, taken somewhere in Amble, in Northumberland. Um, let's say I was selling that as a decorative print. At this size, well, it's cost me next to nothing. It's cost me under a pound to produce. Now, if I sell this at five pound, well, it just feels a bit cheap. If I sell it at 10 pound, you think, well, who's going to pay it? And here comes the second key bit. The first bit is why are you selling? Is it a proper business or is it just to make some money? The second bit is who's going to buy the prints? If you have, and, and the, a lot of these pricing discussions, they have no consideration whatsoever of the market that the prints are going into. If you are selling small prints at an art fair or something like that, there will be a typical pricing which people expect to pay. And this is where you need to know your market. And the biggest problem I have when people say, oh, well, you just do this, this, and this, and here's the formula for pricing your work. Um, that makes no reliance on the fact that you can only sell works if somebody wants to buy them. 
Now, we'll leave apart whether the pictures are of interest or not. That's another consideration. Um, but if nobody wants to buy pictures of a, this particular building, um, this is in, in near a local university I took. This is one of the photos I took for the architects who designed the place. Um, if nobody wants to buy the print, then it's not worth anything. The large print like that, now, large prints like that, I do sell to architects practices. Now, being architects practices, they have no problem if it's a large, good quality print made on a nice paper and something like that, of paying several hundred pounds for a large print. That's because it's a very particular market. But I don't specifically go for that market because it's just not a large. Most uh, jobs I do are never printed. Uh, no matter how good the pictures look, they never get printed. They're used for all kinds of things, but rarely making big prints. So you need to know who's going to buy it. How much do they pay? Now, the simple sort of rule of thumb, multiply your costs, etc., etc., um, is one thing. Um, yeah, that can, as I said, give you figures. But once again, it doesn't include people actually buying the prints. Now, remember too, and um, this is sort of third factor in this, when you do a hunt round for, for prints on sale, you may see uh, online galleries with prices listed. Those are the prices that whoever has the online gallery, and I have a deep scepticism towards online galleries, the only people who make money from online galleries in general are the people who run the online galleries. Those are the people who consistently make money. They make their money off people thinking, oh, I can sell my prints, I'll upload them here, and there will be a stream of buyers turning up at my front door wanting pictures. I'm sure that's happened on occasions, but vanishingly few, and that's the key to it. So you'll see asking prices on these. So you may see, you know, prints available, list of sizes and a list of prices against it. The thing is, the companies that run these galleries, they never say how many sales they get. They never say, and, and most people who sell prints, photographers get very cagey when asking about money. I've had photographers ask why I have actual listed rates on our commercial photography pages. It's because I don't like shopping for services where there is price on application. And I don't see why people should go do the same if they're wanting prices for us. It also serves as a very good uh, you know, filter for getting rid of the tire kickers. Because if you put, you know, our photography starts at 500 pound for such and that somebody who wanted you to do a job for 150 quid won't even bother asking you that's great because they're not the kind of clients i like similarly for print costs if you've got lots of prints if you've got you know bargain basement line of prints at a fiver each um, what does that say about your business if it's a business and if you're just doing it as a hobby to try and make some money Seriously, do you think people are going to pay you a fiver for small pictures? Maybe they will, maybe they won't. You need to do much more research into looking at these things. Now, I've, I've said looking at the costs right up front. I never even really thought about what costs are. Um, how do you count? What, what is the cost of this picture here? Well, you know, physically, paper, ink, that's an easy one to do. Now, this one, it's a, it's a sunk cost in many ways because I did it by t when I was testing a printer. So there is no cost physically to that. The actual picture is one that I've been paid for by the client. So I've already, t so I've already made money on this. So if somebody comes along and wants to buy a print, it's an extra and it's something I'm making. It's that I can't add up costs. I can't say, well, I was out this day. It took me three hours getting there. Um, you know, if you're going to work out your costs in that detail, if you're traveling any distance, do you have mileage rates? Do you include in your costs the fact that you stopped off for a coffee and a snack on the way or anything like that? Do you factor in your time? Well, obviously I do for my commercial work for it, but you know, even that, I have to make allowances because it's a business for marketing. Um, these pictures, any picture that gets used, and this goes for when you see people talking about their photography on YouTube as well, talking about stuff like this. Um, 
I assume that if it's on a moderate, moderately sized channel, certainly a larger channel than this one, they're actually making money from that video. It's one of the reasons they've done the video. So therefore, if I now mention this print here on this video, and over the course of the next year or so, I make some money on this particular video through YouTube, does that reduce my costs? Or does it even make them negative costs? Because I've used the print here for advertising purposes and marketing. What do you count as costs? Now, if you're thinking of it as a larger scale business, that's fair enough because these are all sorts of things. You know, this is one of the things that Karen does for Northlight Images. She looks after our marketing. So she looks at income. She looks at money's going out, what we do, usage of time. It comes at a point where working out costs becomes very difficult. Let's take, for example, you know, this large print at the top here. Now, this one was a 47 foot long print um, and it's Leicester at dusk and it was taken over three nights. And there's a there's an I'll put a link to it. There's an article all about the making of that. Suffice to say that took me several weeks of effort to create that image and that print at that size. It's something like, I think it's uh, six gigabytes, the source image for it for printing. Caused all kinds of problems when it's printed on canvas there, uh, which is why the lighting's not great on it. But anyway, it gives you an idea of the size of it there with me sitting against it. Now, what if somebody wanted to buy that print? Well, it's a sunk cost as far as I'm concerned because um, it's a print that I've widely used for marketing and it has helped get me work and various things like that. So if you say, what are my costs for that? Well, are you going to say that it took several weeks of my time? Because that's expensive. Where I would use that print in working out, let's say a client came along and they wanted me to produce a similar style image. I know now how much work goes into it and I could quote for producing an image like that. And it would be several thousand pounds um, for it to produce an image like that for it as, as a bespoke new one. That would include lots of visits to the site, all kinds of things. Add in travel expenses if it's any distance. And you know, yeah, it's an impressive site, but it's gonna cost you a fair bit. Now, this particular print still sits rolled up in a cardboard box somewhere it's on canvas and the reason for that is I'm happy and I've been asked to you know I was happy to do, donate it to Leicester the city here where I live because yeah it's it's a very good picture of Leicester um, unfortunately the local council um, and I know the Leicester city mayor um, and he loves this picture um, and would love to show it somewhere but they haven't got a wall big enough to put it on that, that where they can show it I said you can have it yeah, my donation to the city uh, promotion. Yeah, that donation comes with all the costs of working at how you're going to mount it and display it. So, you know, always yeah, beware gift horses. Um, it might be a free print, but it's going to cost you quite a lot. So that is for marketing purposes. This print here was when I was testing a printer. Uh, just happens that happens to be a picture taken out of our loft window. So I haven't traveled any distance. I went upstairs. It was I was attracted to the sunset. Um, there was some, you know, I took the picture. I made the print, the paper I wasn't paying for the, um, the ink and whatever. It was a Canon printer I was testing Pro 2000 at the time. Yeah, there we go. That's a free picture. Somebody wanted to buy it at that size. Well, they're not going to get this print because it's got crinks in it because I've just picked it up in holding it in front of the camera but yeah for a print like this oh I don't know let's let's pluck a figure out of the air yes you can have that one for 90 quid although if it became popular don't know maybe 150 I don't know if somebody asked me for that particular print if I still had it here in a collection I do keep a lot of prints but if I had that particular one if it was a friend of mine they could have it for nothing they have then got the cost of framing it, mounting it. Now, if you're offering framing mounting services, that's a whole lot more expenses you need to add. If you're hoping to sell through a gallery, a proper gallery, then you have to remember that the gallery cut may be 50 to 100%. So you may only got a 100, pr 100 pound print in the gallery, you will be lucky if you see 50 pounds for it. So there's that. But once again, it comes back to why you're doing it. If it's a hobby, 
is it a vanity project? And I mean vanity in the best of ways, in that you just want to show people your work. There's nothing wrong with that. I do it all the time with stuff like this. Oh, by the way, this one here is the printer that that was printed on. And that is me, and it was a good few years ago, uh, me standing inside of it when you could still get in this room. That's another room. This used to be my dark room years ago, uh, an actual physical dark room where I did uh, film processing and the likes. Haven't touched film Ooh, for over 20 years now and I have no intention of going back to it so it's it's a print room now but you know it's got several prints you'll notice just piled up on here I, I end up with lots of prints because of all the testing I do and things like that with papers and stuff and that but the key always comes back it is not about the price it is about the profit you are making and an understanding of your costs and what you can get. As I say, yeah, if I could get £150 for a nice print of this done on, uh, you know, done on a nice paper, framed and everything for a frame that I just might happen to have, then great, I've made some money on it. But that's not the same as doing it as a business. So above all, think about why you're printing it. If you can find people who can give you information on, here's a particular print I made. I sold this. I sold so many copies of it. I sold it at whatever. That's great information. But people just coming along going, oh yes, yes, add up your costs, multiply them by three and there's the price for your picture, means nothing. Um, the real thing is to understand who your potential customers are. Now, I hope that's of some interest. Um, once again, I will get complaints that I haven't actually answered the question. That's because the answer with things like this is always, it depends. Simple responses are more often wrong than right. So, you know, hence you get me meandering on about prints and the like. I hope it's been of interest. Please do ask questions. I'll put a few useful links to things. I'll put a link to the making of this in the in the notes as well, if you're curious as to how I made this 47 foot long print um, and how many pictures went into making it up. Um, yeah, that was that's quite an impressive picture. It certainly is when you see it full size on a wall. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel. Much appreciated and uh, bye.